the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. So late now in Advent, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, teach us to pray as you did. Lord, have mercy. Give us today our daily bread. Christ, have mercy. Forgive us our sins as we forgive one another. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. And we pray, O oh God, who, seeing the human race fallen into death, will to redeem it by the coming of your only begotten Son. Grant, we pray, that those who confess his incarnation, the word becoming flesh, with humble fervor, may merit his company as their redeemer. Lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah brought Samuel with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord. As you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. She left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts the Lord my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap, he lifts up the poor to seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. the keystone of the church. Come and save man, whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, alleluia. May our Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. 
My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He cast down the mighty from their thrones, lifted up the lowly. He filled the hungry with good things, the rich. He sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Now we all use the expression Christmas is for children. It might be better to say Christmas is about children. As Jeannie just read for us, Hannah has been trying to get pregnant forever, and finally she gets pregnant, an older woman. She takes the baby to, to be dedicated. They kill the poor bull. God bless the poor bull. But they dedicate the baby to, to the Lord. So it's about a baby. And then Elizabeth who will be in our age, in the 60s, probably maybe older, she gets pregnant with the child. Can't happen. How, you know, she's pregnant with the baby. Mary gets pregnant. She can't be pregnant, but she's pregnant, and she gives birth to a child. So it's not really for children. It's all about children. And you notice Hannah, if you want to go read First Samuel, Hannah says the same words that Mary will say in her Magnificat. They, Luke steals the words from Hannah and puts them on the lips of Mary. You know how God has acted to, to, to help me and give me a child. It is all about children. H how about us? D doesn't Christmas bring out, I hope it does, the wonder the excitement of Christmas Eve that most of us in our old age have lost just by the, the, the being jaded that comes, the cynicism, whatever, that comes with being old. And we're all old. But Christmas brings out the child in me, the excitement of buying presents, the packed mall, the packed house at 4 o'clock mass. And Christmas brings out that child in me, it does, I, and I hope that never stops. I hope you have it too. And, and if, we, if we grasp that, that that child in me, an old man now, I can't remember even being a child, but Christmas brings it out of me, you, you listen to Mary's words even more deeply. Because it's, it's not about us, who, you know, who, who do everything around here, but it's for kids who don't even know who, who or what God is yet. But notice Mary says it's the lowly that God is showing his mercy. The rich, get out of here. He's filled the hungry with good things. The rich, get, get out of here. Isn't, isn't it funny how that happens? It's kind of a prelude for how the rest of the gospel will go. Those who, who think there's something, eh, get out of here. It's the baby who can't change his own diaper that the story is about, not us. Isn't it amazing? how God turns everything upside down. And maybe for one night he turns me and you upside down and we are filled again with wonder and awe and joy and happiness and excitement. Our grandchildren opening up the present, the house decorated, the Christmas crate set up, the tree looking beautiful, the presents all wrapped. For one day Christmas brings out the child and the best in me. I hope he does in you. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll offer our petitions to the Lord. For our Pope and all who lead the church, 
that the season of Advent and Christmas will inspire their leadership and grant them continued strength and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For legislators and leaders of nations, that the Lord may guide their decisions in order to uphold the dignity of human life at every stage, from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Andy Spraglia, Sr., for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be at peace with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Well, God, we have journeyed through Advent now to its last days. So near to Christmas, may our Lord find us watching, ready, thirsting, like a parched land to be filled with the joy of Christmas. We make all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It's by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of the nativity, that he may find us watchful in prayer, exultant in his praise. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, minions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we praise you as we say, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood 
blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. And praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ever evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
great deal of thanks goes out to those who have done the work getting the church into such beautiful condition. I think our Christmas creche is just spectacular, short, of course, of the infant Jesus will be carried up in procession at the four o'clock mass on Christmas. But a lot of work goes into setting up these trees, and maybe I don't thank the people enough who do all that work, and it's a lot of lugging, a lot of putting together, etc. So just um, just an awful lot of work. And we don't. It, it, I hope you take the time to look at the pictures hanging on the red strips in the back of the church, which are of you, Joe Q. Public. And um, that's, the, 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 that's what decorates the church. You know, Kenny Rogers saying, you decorate my life. He's right. You decorate the church, flowers and all that. That tree, I, we could do without that as much as you can't do without you. So also, and I have to be very blunt in saying this, I, I was walking or driving through Dunmore yesterday and a woman who I happened to know from Dunmore had fallen on an icy patch and being the good Samaritan that I am and the nice guy that I am, I, I and, and others helped get her up and I think she'll be fine. But if, it's, if, if it rains and then snows and then freezes, it will be impossible to get all that snow on a freezing cold, like zero degree day, it'll be impossible to have these parking lots and the steps and everything as clear as I would like. And some of you will fall. You will, like that lady did. And you have to be very careful. It's gonna be nasty, it's gonna be really nasty. The coldest Christmas of our lifetimes, I think, or one of them. So if, you're, if you insist on coming, and some of you will, I know some of you will, you have to have somebody with you to hold on to you. Because there's, be, there's going to be slippery spots. There just are. There's no way. This is a massive piece of power. No church will be dry. There'll be some spots you've got to be very careful. It's Christmas. You want to go to church. You should want to go to church. But please have somebody help you in and out of the car, in and out of the church. Let us stand to pray, my friends. May the reception of your Eucharist, Lord, strengthen us that we may go out to meet our Savior with worthy deeds when he comes and merit the rewards of the blessed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.